Hello and welcome to Hot Issues. My name is John Hughes. Over the past few weeks, a salad of issues that have engaged the Ghanaian media landscape and the citizenry have been the Airbus scandal, the missing excavators, Galamse issues. But top on the agenda for this week has been the Vice President's results fair. Also on top is the hashtag Justice for Root Ishan, the murdered nurse somewhere in a yom, and the conversation about the seven girls who were deborganized from the Jisaman Secondary School. I've been joined in studio by a ranking member of the Gender and Children Committee in Parliament, also a member of the Education Committee in Parliament, and a member of Parliament for the Pusiga constituency in the Upper East Region, Ayamba Ai Ladi is my guest. Honorable, thank you very much for your time. Grateful thank to you have too. you. How are you doing? I'm doing good, are you? Very well. How's Pusiga? This guy is fine. Great. I'm sure you've had the conversation, so we'll zoom straight into action. Let's start off with the uh, murdered nurse, gruesomely murdered, who uh, left behind three children and her husband. How does that make you feel, first of all, as a gender champion? All right, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of this murder actually came as a very big uh, surprise mm -hmm. to some of us. It is because we, we, we were just like, how? Hmm. Why? What could have led to it? We had so many questions hmm. than answers. Because this is a community uh, health nurse, hmm. someone who works uh, not only in the hospital, hmm. but also gives services to the people back in their homes and wherever it may be needed. And then that notwithstanding a woman. It's, it's, it's quite disheartening, something that cannot just, it's, it's not even acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable in the sense that uh, to have murdered, not only murdering, mm -hmm. but according to the allegations, rape. Mm -hmm. This woman was even raped. And she had gone to the bank to maybe cash some money. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much the money is. So it means that there is even robbery. Right. If only the money is, was not found on her mm. when she was discovered after uh, being murdered. Mm. So there are three issues mm. that have come to play in the case of uh, our late sister Ruth Essien. How has the committee in parliament, the gender committee, taken this? Yes, we are actually taking it very seriously, but because she's a nurse, mm. the health committee has already come up with a statement. Mm. And uh, from both sides, the chairman of the health committee and then the ranking. I, as a ranking member for gender, mm. was around when the statement was made in, you know, on the floor of parliament. Mm. So I contributed to it. But just as I was saying, uh, it's unfortunate that this has happened to a young woman with three children and a husband who was sincerely only doing her work mm as she had promised to do, and maybe might have been sworn mm. in to do. I'm uh, sure you've heard the comments of the regional minister, Simon Osimens, uh, regarding this issue, who is also the chairman of the regional security committee. Uh, a lot of backlash has come to him, and the statement is alleging to have said that he says, if you murder your wife in your home, how does that become the problem of uh, the regional security council? How do you take that as well? I, I, I take it very, very bad, very bad. I'm not happy at all about that statement. The lady was not murdered, murdered in her house, and it's not her, her husband who murdered her. Because if you say that if you murder your wife in your house, how does it become the, the, the responsibility or the issue uh, of uh, regional security? Mm. Then sincerely, uh, for lack of a better word, I would say, He's being irresponsible. What could he have said instead? He could have said, it's unfortunate, we are sorry for it, we, are, we would have to look into the matter, we have to make sure that investigations are quickened, we have to make sure that the perpetrators are brought to book, mm. and what have you. And then to sympathize with the bereaved family. But if you so say this, it means you are more or less telling all other nurses that then maybe they should be sleeping in the hospital and not going anywhere hmm. so that they can work because they definitely have to live in their homes as individuals, come to work as individuals, either by walking, riding on motorbikes, on bicycles, depending on the area, or even in vehicles. 
and most of them may have to pass through areas where it's quite risky. So someone who is leading a uh, RECSEC mm -hmm. in that region, coming out to say this, is it, it, it's, it's not, it's not acceptable. He should come out and apologize mm -hmm. to all nurses and to all women for that matter. And then to make sure that he lives up to expectation. You cannot be a responsible person by making such a, a statement that on, 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 on someone who has been painfully killed. The conversation now is turning into the fact that we should move away from the concept of making the regional minister an automatic boss of the regional security council because they may not necessarily have some security training or knowledge. What do you say to that? Uh, I do not agree with that in the sense Why that not? Uh, the regional minister, the, uh, the, 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 the district uh, chief executive, be it metropolitan or whatsoever, should be part of it because they are those who in, in are... In this case, it is the regional minister and if you like the DC, who are the bosses, the back stops with them. But they may not have any training or knowledge about security issues. What do yes, you say? Yes, it's, it's not an issue of training. They are not being asked to go and do the work as per security But they take the persons, decisions but for they those who are, are working. Those who, yes, and that is where they need to be part of it. Because the policies are being initiated from the executive and they are those who implement whatever. They are supposed to bring up the issues. They are supposed to actually come to tell. Mm -hmm. These are the issues that we are being faced with. They are supposed to alert the security services in their areas to know that, please, this is what is going on, and we need you to do A, B, C, and what have you. That leadership type of role in order to make sure that policies that are in place work mm -hmm. should be coming from them. Mm. It doesn't mean that they should be security trained or whatsoever before they are, they are. They have to put up their leadership skills and ensure that they support the services or the forces mm. to bring to bear the, the results of incidents that occur mm. to enable the citizenry or the people of their various regions mm know that they are safe. But here we sit with you disappointed that the minister made such a statement. If yes. he had security training and a background, perhaps he wouldn't have said this. It's not, Would an, he have? It's not an issue of security training. What he has said is not an issue of security training. What is it's it? an issue of he reneging on his responsibility. It's an issue of he not feeling it because he, it is not he himself. Excuse me to say, if this had been his wife, he would know the pain the husband is going through. If it had been the mother of his children, he would have known what situation the children are going to be in, how they are going to live and grow, and he wouldn't have made such a sweeping, unacceptable statement. The nurses are threatening that. to lay down their tools if investigations are not expedited and the corporates are about to book. We understand that one suspect has been arrested. What would you say to the nurses if you had a chance to address them? Uh, I would say they should try as much as they can to, re to, to exercise restraint a bit. Even when they don't feel protected? Yes. I, I am not saying that they feel protected, but they should know that uh, it is an incident that has occurred, an unfortunate one, which we all share the pain with them. We are not happy, mm. but at least per their profession, they should try as much as they can while they are demanding that they should be given that kind of uh, protection. They should be supported. Investigations should take place very fast. Mm -hmm. Those who have been arrested should not be given that opportunity to run away and begin going around to do A, B, C to get themselves off. They shouldn't be left off the hook. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be long. They should make those demands while they continue to work. Because at the end of the day, without them, mm. without them, it's going to be very difficult in the hospitals in that region, not even only in that region, but in other regions. Because it's, you, wherever you are, as a nurse, you could be affected. This comes on the back of, the, of a compendium or a list of many unsolved murders in the natural Benta, uh, Roger Kumsin, uh, the Ghana Port and Harbors woman in Tema, uh, the, in the north somewhere, Ghana Water Company, uh, so many of them. Yeah. I mean, it comes on the back of that. So certainly, I mean, they are not too sure. Even your member of parliament, uh, your colleague member of parliament, J.B. Dankwe, do four years on, we do not know who murdered who, and nobody has really been punished. Should they not be worried and should this not be enough justification for them to say, until you find them, we are not working because we don't feel safe? They should be worried. We are all worried. 
And yesterday, if you listen to my contribution to the statement on the floor, I still made that statement, which I have been making whenever these incidents occur, that it is very important that justice is... I mean, if you, if you delay justice, you are, you are more or less just reneging on it. Mm. And so it should be fast. When the, the perpetrators are brought to book, whatever uh, 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 sanctions are placed on them, we should know. We should be made to know. Mm. Because as you delay, as you continue to keep uh, 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 mute, no, nobody knows whatever you are doing or what extent you have gotten to, then it becomes another story. It looks like you, you don't care. Mm. And I do, not, I do not know why it should continue to be like that. Because it's not an issue of only the nurses. Just as you have said, my colleague or our colleague in parliament, mm. whom we all know, one of the very gentle, fine men in parliament, was gruesomely murdered uh, in his own bedroom. Not even downstairs, but upstairs. There is somebody who is being held and up till now, we are not getting the head and tail of whatever is going on. We've spoken and said so many things. Mm -hmm. We have always asked for justice to, 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 to take place so that we all be safe. Do you think safe. we're getting justice? And we are not, we are not getting Investigations it. Investigations are happening, we are not so getting it. Told. What are we talking about? The Investigations, in how long, how long that do, should investigations take place? The matter is how in court. Long? Yes, the matter is in court, but the court should expedite, expedite action. They should be very fast. At least with cases of murder, someone is dead. Others are suffering. They are struggling. They cannot even sleep. This lady, as of now, is not buried. Her husband cannot sleep. Her children are crying around. The whole of her family, all nurses are not comfortable. And yet you cannot just use some time. Is it is if we do not have the men, or we do not have the gadgets, or we do not have the persons to do the work, let us say so to government so that we can be supported to make sure that these people are normally brought to justice very fast. Honorable, you sound very passionate about this. And the backlash uh, af after you made a statement on the floor of parliament yesterday was that you didn't exert the same level of passion when your colleague member of parliament, Lydia Lassen, lost her husband. And you were on the floor of the parliament quoting from Google and calling her bloody widow. Giving hindsight, would you retract that, apologize to her as a gender champion? No. I wouldn't. Why wouldn't you? I wouldn't because Lydia, the, the, the bloody widow, was not directed to Lydia. It wasn't directed. It wasn't? No. It wasn't directed. Who was referred was to as based, a bloody widow? No. She wasn't referred to as a bloody widow. Okay. She wasn't referred to as a bloody widow. The issue of the bloody widow was to connote the fact that that election was being based on blood stricken activities okay. leading to her election but not she herself but there was because a window they were in the a mix whole, it, it didn't it didn't actually matter but this was how we saw it and this was how we took it and i had do not owe anybody any apology because i am saying it as it is i saw what happened at uh, uh Iowasu west wagon i saw it i even saw my colleague mp being slapped I saw how some people were being beaten. I saw someone whose uh, leg was shot at with the bones shattered. Mm. And it was horrible. And so what do, on what basis, on what foundation, on what grounds was the election taking place? On blood. Would you make that statement again if you had a chance? Even if I am given the chance a hundred times, I will still make that statement. And say because bloody it widow. Was, yes, because it was not the writing. It was not the best. Lydia Pese, we didn't say, murdered her husband. Mm. So how can she be the, the one to be referred to? She was not who, the one who murdered her husband. Were you misunderstood not, at the time? Well, I would say maybe people, people have their opinions. People can, can read and say whatever they want to say out of the talk of uh, another person. Okay. You could make a statement and then someone end. I think that that's how people uh, read it. But for me, my understanding was that the issue of bloody widow was based on the elections and how issues went and what happened on the elections day leading to the election of Lydia, mm. Honorable Lydia. So I do not see it I don't, and I don't regret forever talking about it. No. Would it feature in the 2020 campaign? Do you know? Well, I, I, I do not know. I do not know. It depends on the one who is there because 
Uh, constituencies are different. Uh, the 275 constituencies have got different ways of right. uh, going about their campaigns mm -hmm. and winning their elections. Okay. So it depends on the individual. Maybe the one who would be contesting there, no matter who side, whether uh, NDC, MPP, PNC, CPP, or whatsoever, mm -hmm. they, they will know how to launch their campaign. And, and I think that's, Very well. that is it. On that bloody note, we will come back with some more from A.G. Suman. And we'll try and find out from the Honorable Member for Pussy what's really happening uh, on the grounds there. Whether she feels safe or she feels threatened on the ground. Uh, this is Hot Issue. We'll be right after this. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes. I'm guest presenting for your regular. And my guest in studio is the Honorable Ranking Member for the Gender and Children Committee in Parliament. She is also a member of the Education Committee and the sitting member of Parliament for the Pusiga constituency in the Upper East region. Her name is Ladi Ayi Ayamba. Madam, welcome back from the break. So before the break, we're talking about IELTS West Wogon and Matis Arising. Let's zoom straight into Ejisoman. I'm sure you've heard that seven girls have been debordenized for uh, gross behavior, misconduct, whatever you want to call it. The statement as was published, um, you know, out there, leaked perhaps not by the school, but by someone, says that the image of the school is at stake. And this was because four years ago, uh, a similar incident had happened where some teachers had slept with some of the girls. And now they're talking about the image and they say the girls should leave. Education watchers have said that Debordenizing the girls is to empower them to do even worse than what they did. What do you say, uh, Johnny? I think that uh, when I when I when I first saw the video, mm. I went back to actually look at the logo okay. and believe that it was a school in Ghana. Really, sincerely, because I I was like, no, how, how how come it that these girls would have the opportunity to put across such a video. Mm. So I looked at the logo twice and went through their videos mm. that and, and listened to them. You wanted I'm to not, be sure? I'm not, yes, I wanted to be sure. Mm. I'm not a tree-speaking person, right. although I understand quite about 60-70%. Mm. But I, I think even yesterday, I still went back to look at it to just believe mm. that, yes, this is what I'm reading on the media, on mm. social media, and then what I am actually listening to. Uh, Johnny, it's, 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 it's disheartening. I don't know what kind of society we think we are building. Look, the human rights, uh, children's rights, mm. and whatever they may call themselves may say whatever they want to say. But we need to be conscious of the fact that we are building a society mm. without which our future is blink mm. and Bleak, I mean. And we shouldn't forget that these same girls are those who are going to be women of the future. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Most probably, like some of us, like the female doctors out there, mm -hmm. pilots out there. And what have you? What do we see? Tell me. We see girls, young girls. I do not know if any of them is up to 18 years. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to get their ages. All right. But uh, from my calculations, if anything, maybe the oldest will be about 18 or 17 plus. Right. The video is horrible. It's not the best. But our culture, our values, mm. the education we are given, the way we are being taught at home, mm. and what have you, and as women, and for that matter, girls, it's not acceptable. What do you blame it on? I am blaming it, one, on the fact that the person who went in with that, uh, 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 the, the, the phone, right. which was used, mm -hmm. has to be partially blamed. Secondly, the school itself needs to keep an eye, because maybe some of them are keeping phones without the knowledge of the, the school authorities, the administration. Mm -hmm. It could be one of the issues. Right. And they need to also be supported by parents mm. to ensure that these girls, while even they are at home, what are their activities? We're, we understand that some of them and keep what have you? a double life. They go home, 
they are angels. They come out to school and they are big or giant monsters. Has that come to the attention of the committee in parliament? No, it hasn't come to our attention, but my own observations and findings mm. have led to one or two things that actually show that some of them live at home as angels, and when they go out there, they are the most horrible, excuse me, mm. devils that you can ever think of. Mm. Because uh, I tried to find out about uh, the dressing mm -hmm. of some of these girls on the streets, right. in the markets, at weddings, mm at outdoorings mm. and maybe in churches i say some of the girls mm -hmm. and you just ask yourself as a mother whether the mother or the parents or those who are senior to her mm. in her house if it so happens that she's living with them right actually saw that person dressed in that manner and leaving the house so parental care then parental care one of the issues. Are we failing in that area? We are not failing, but we are lacking in certain issues. How do we you need mean? to step up. How do you mean? Yes, we are lacking in some issues because we think that, after all, my girl is in secondary school and she's grown. Others are like that. Comparison, wrong comparison, is not good enough. Because you would only think that others are doing it. Mm -hmm. But who are they? It's one of the questions. Peer influence. Most parents today do not even care whom their children move with. My girl child, where is she? Whom is she moving with? Who is her friend? What are they doing? Where are they going to? Do you want to blame this on social media? No, what I wouldn't they, blame what it. What they see on social media with these slay queens and everybody else, they, I they look up to them as role models who Johnny, are showing I would, flesh and Johnny, talking Johnny, I wouldn't blame naughty. it on social media. Mm. I wouldn't blame it on social media. If you are monitoring and you are checking on your child, and you see your child going that way, looking or watching at these activities or some of these actions of some of these slave queens and what have you. I think, you see, you need to know the growth of a child right. and then to be able to advise that child. By 14, 15, you should begin telling the child things that are good and, not, and things that are not good enough mm -hmm. for that child. Let the child understand that some of these things you are looking will surely have an effect Should on you. Should they have been debodinized? Professor Day says they got the least of what they deserve. Uh, some education watchers say don't, you shouldn't have debodinized them because now what you're going to do is that if they don't have homes in Ejisu, means that they would have to go into private hostels. That is, that and is, you have that emboldened is, that them is, that to that go is, and do the worst. That is quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Why is it? I do not know whether uh, these people you are talking about, the educationists, uh, whatever category they are, I do not know whether they know that there are girls who do not come from Ejisu. Mm. Maybe not less than 700 to 800 miles from Ejisu. Right. And yet, they are these students. They are not boarding students. What about them? And yet, they haven't committed such offenses. So you, th you think they should come from home? From which home? They should rent for them. Because as we are discussing mm. the issues of how and why such things can happen, we have spoken about parents. They are too young so it's not to, be, to be living on their own. Very good. Think? What about those who have come and they have rented for them? What about those who are in secondary schools and they have rented for them? Is that Girls. the right thing? Is that the right way to go? Well, if we think that it is not the right way to go, we don't have the, 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 the infrastructure to keep all of them in school. And definitely the free senior high school, has brought in maybe if, uh, for instance, a class was taking 40, mm. it's now taking about 300, and for that matter, the dormitory that, in which the girls... That's an overkill. No class takes 300 p children. Maximum could be 60, 70, well, maybe with, 80. I am saying with the free SHS right. and then with the issue of admissions. Admission, right. Enrollment, mm. increase in enrollment. Mm. You see... Is and that so justification for, for parents going to rent accommodation for youngsters? No, but yes, definitely they have to rent for them. If the child is in that school and then there is no accommodation in the school, the child has been placed there as a, a day student, what do you do? What do you do? In the, the, during the budget statement, mm. I made a statement about how one lady at Nkwanta mm. has to be a day student. They are selling eggs after classes. And they are living with one woman who has to even come out and support them. There's these things and what seem to you? be happening in uh, s s category C secondary schools. 
you will find A and B secondary schools like the Wesley girls, like the Achimota, like the Archbishop Porter girls, like Infantman doing these things. How many of those in those schools are day students? And if they are day students, most of them, I can assure you, you can go back and look at the records, are living within their own vicinities. And so most of them might be living at home or they are, even if they are day students. What does the committee propose? Your committee well, um, our proposal on these girls' issue is that basically all girls should be given accommodation. Okay. And all girls should not be posted so far away from out of where they are, their districts, mm. especially, where even to, for a parent to visit them, it becomes uh, very, uh, very difficult. Mm. Imagine if I, I had one chap who was a, a girl who was uh, placed in, uh, from Puzga to Accra. Yes. Where is she going to? Where, where is she going to stay in Accra? Whom is she going to live with? The GS. She's not yet even fifteen years. The GS claims they have guidance and counselling units, and they say they are alive and well. And do you think that they should be strengthened? Because our investigations will prove that they are usually a teacher who has academic burden who is also given a task to be a guidance and counseling teacher. What do you say as a member of the <laughs> education <laughs> guidance, in guidance and counseling is not uh, responsible to stop this. Guidance and counseling, you are only guided, you are, you are taught, you are told uh, maybe one or two things. And it's not, it's, not a, it's not something that you can always have. Okay. No. It's not something that I do not know how they do it. But should we strengthen the guidance and counseling? Even needs? if you strengthen them, you are only strengthening them to ensure that they are able to work. Should but the impact mm. is the greatest problem. Should we then tie the uh, key performance index uh, of uh, head teachers to good, good uh, discipline so that if your headmaster and these things are found in your school, you are to blame largely yes. for it? Should yes. we? Yes, because the head teacher is the head of the leadership of the school. Mm. It doesn't mean that if you tie it to the headmaster or the head teacher or head whatsoever you call that person, it doesn't mean it's only that person who is making sure that these things are implemented. Discipline is implemented. Mm. No, there are other teachers who have been assigned roles like the housemaster right. or the housemistress mm. or the, 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 the hall prefect, the, the hall master, right. and what have you. And so if all these are properly put in place, and these teachers are those who do their work. Mm. I, I, I don't see why a teacher, a, a headmaster, cannot be held responsible. Honorable, I thank you very much. What's happening in Pusiga? Are you in a comfortable lead? Uh, I, I'm praying. Mm. I'm hoping and praying, and uh, I'm trying my best. I'm just uh, leaving the rest to the Almighty Allah. Okay. And I hope that the work I have done for the past uh, seven years now in my eighth year, I'm hoping that the people of Pusiga see, have seen it, mm. appreciate it, and that they will vote for me come December 7, mm. so that I'll continue to do the, 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 the works that I had been doing. Mm. Uh, I am one person, I don't uh, politicize my activities okay. in Pusiga. Okay. For instance, you don't come to me talking of support if possible or if needed then i go to want to know whether you are ndc you are mpp you are pnc or you are cpp because politics has got so many dynamics mm. and you need to be conscious of that and you are only for a political party when you are a candidate is your candidate strong enough to unseat you uh, i don't underrate people i don't underrate people because you do not know what god might have put place in place for you mm. so i don't underrate I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that I am able to outwit him mm. in the elections. But for me to say that he is either strong or not strong is not for me. Okay. The, let's wrap up on the Airbus matter. Governor Official One is trending these days. The MPP says it is your presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama. What do you say? Is he Governor Official One <laughs> from where you sit in Parliament <laughs> and what you know? Uh, it's not from where I sit. Mm. Uh, I actually was surprised when I heard some of my colleagues even holding uh, programs, mm. uh, radio programs, and trying to put the blame on uh, mm. our flag bearer uh, president to come, mm. His Excellency John Ramani Mahama, 
former president, mm. that he is the one who is referred to as a government official mm. one. I was, I was like, oh, goodness me. So it means that you cannot refer to, uh, so you cannot, you cannot use a tag just to express something unless it is directed and that anybody who looks at it, I, I see that people can have their own perspective in right. reading whatever. And so that is the way that people have read it. Why do they think that he's, if you say government official, the word official alone, mm -hmm. the word official doesn't mean that it is the president. And that one doesn't mean that it is the president. An official of a government can be any other person mm. who maybe might have been appointed. We had ministers, we had deputy ministers, mm. we had uh, uh, special assistants, and what have you. So that person could have been referred to as government official one. Once it was not uh, uh, mentioned, the name was not mentioned. You don't go on to tax somebody about commissions. And when we talk about commissions, what are we actually talking about? Tell me, what are even we in, talking about? In Ghana, even in Ghana, even in Pusiga, my own uh, uh, constituency, small constituency, let me say, mm. you cannot talk of commission and say that it is a crime. Because we know that even in renting a room, mm. there are people whom we say between us, people mm. who act between. And then they go on to talk about, oh, my, I'm going to get you a place, but my commission is maybe one CD, two CDs, or 10% of whatever, or 5% of whatever you are going to pay to the, the one that, the owner of the accommodation. So you're saying John Mahama did no wrong. He's not guilty as charged. I am um, uh, in, as charged, mm. as charged. I'm using that for what? In quotations. Okay, yeah. then I, I accept that from he you. He did no wrong? He did no wrong. Okay. And I do not see it. Thank you. At Honorable. All. Most grateful Thank for you your too. time. I wish you all the best. Thank and you. Uh, we'll talk after your election, hopefully, uh, when you are able to maintain your lead. We'll Inshallah. talk about like my agree. guest in studio. It's been a ranking member of the Gender and Children Committee in Parliament. She's also a member of the Education Committee and a um, reigning member of Parliament for, or sitting member of Parliament for the Pusiga constituency in the Upper East region. Ladi Ai Ayamba. My name is John Hughes. Until next time, see you. Thank you.